How's it going everybody? Welcome to Gaming Instinct's review of Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. I'm Sam Lee, reading for writer Leona Melikov. And before we get started, a huge thank you to Koei Tecmo for providing Gaming Instinct's a review copy. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the review. The long-running Dynasty Warrior franchise is another new release, and this time around, it's Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, which is a spin-off of the original Dynasty Warriors games. For those who don't know, the Empire spin-off is a tad more tactical and strategic rather than the original mainline entries. In Dynasty Warriors Empire series, you have to make political choices and figure out how you're going to be taking over the kingdom and becoming an emperor. How does the latest entry in the spin-offs of Dynasty Warriors play and feel today compared to previous entries of the series as a whole? To find that out, let's jump right in. First and foremost, I have to admit that I haven't played a mainline Dynasty Warrior game in probably over a decade. There has been just too many other games released that took my interest over the last generation. However, I did play Dynasty Warrior 6 and a few older ones, but it has been such a long time that I don't really remember how good or bad the games were. It's also worth noting that I never actually touched an Empires game before either, and this is my first entry into the Empire series. So, this was something completely new to me, and I wasn't sure what to expect. For the gameplay, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires really only has one game mode, which is Conquest Mode. There's also an edit mode where you can create a custom officer and then take him or her to your Conquest Mode if you wish, not to take the pre-made officers that already exist in the game. In Conquest Mode, your goal is to basically go from a nobody to eventually be promoted to higher ranks and then become an emperor who controls an entire kingdom. Obviously, at the start of the game, you have nothing, no army, no money, no officers to tag along with you. At the beginning, your goal is to start making some gold and rations so that you can eventually build up an army. You do this through political choices on the left-hand menu. Every time you make a choice, one month passes by in the game time. This is where strategic play comes in and you have to think and figure out what is the best political choice to make for the duration of that one month before moving to your next set of actions. The player can choose choices such as fundraising that helps you raise gold, procuring rations that helps you raise your rations, or trade that gives you a bit of both resources. As you rank up, you eventually get access to something like Great Trade that gives you even more resources than the original trading option did. Then, there are diplomatic choices like scouting where you scout for more officers from a different kingdom to join yours. You can also do bribery and things like alliance and encirclement and so on. At this point, you get the idea. The original Dynasty Warriors games do not have this, and that is where Empires is different. As you rank up, eventually you'll get to have an ability to make even more meaningful choices that previously were not available to you, such as invading other pieces of land or even exiling officers from your kingdom. Another interesting feature is the ability to stroll through the city and talk to other officers to increase their companionship level with you, or potentially try to recruit unaffiliated officers into your kingdom. The player can also stroll the city in a physical in-game space and run around and interact with everyone or do it through main menus instead, which I like way more because it's simply a lot faster. One thing that does bother me is that any time you interact with an officer, you are taken into a very short loading screen for an unnecessary cutscene that doesn't serve much purpose and always tends to be the same. This makes zero sense and is a complete waste of time and it happens every time I interact with an officer when you're in the city itself, but it does not if you do it through the menus. Once a certain amount of months have passed, the War Council begins, where you have to make or propose what to do with the kingdom until the next War Council period. At the beginning of the game, you can only agree or disagree with the current ruler of the kingdom, since you are basically a nobody at first. But as soon as you become the ruler, eventually, then you get to set your own objectives. But your officers have a chance to propose their ideas instead, and you have the right to accept or deny them. Eventually, you have to start invading kingdoms, and this is where the core gameplay of original Dynasty Warriors comes into play. You are put into an open battlefield, and your objective is to take the castle for yourself if you're invading, or defend it if you're being invaded. You must use rations to be able to invade. The more rations you have, the bigger army you can take with you. Before the battle starts, you also have an option to carry out a secret plan, which are like mini-objectives. These mini-objectives must be met in a certain amount of time. If the criteria is indeed met, then you will gain an advantage on the battlefield. One objective may ask you to just simply kill a bunch of officers, or take over certain areas or protect a specific target for a particular amount of time. The enemy during the battle will also initiate a secret plan on their own, and you can counter it by following the given objective. During our review, we had to stop a bunch of messengers to get into a certain area, so I had to chase them down and kill them and also take over a base. After that, you have to capture the rest of the bases so that your army can start an assault on the castle's gates. 
can either break down the gates by using Ram Siege weaponry, or infiltrating it via the Siege Towers using a grappling hook and breaking the lock instead for faster access. Once inside the castle, you need to finish the Commander, that's usually marked on the map. Kill him and the kingdom is yours. During defensive battles, you protect your castle instead, but the gameplay is for the most part the same. Despite not playing any of the games in either franchises for many years, one thing is for sure. This game has always been and continues to be, but ugly. While I do understand the appeal of Dynasty Warriors games is to run around and beat up a bunch of officers, their armies, and take over the land and castles, but the game almost looks borderline the same as they did many years ago. And we are on new generation hardware as well, which is the PlayStation 5. The PS3, if not almost PS2 lookalike textures, weird flickering in the distance, and even some small frame rate drops made me kind of question on what exactly is going on when it comes to the technical side of these titles. None of the things here look stellar or super demanding in terms of hardware, and yet the system struggles from time to time to run it at a locked 60 frames per second. In conclusion, it's quite staggering how a game with such low quality production values is running into strange technical hiccups from time to time on new generation hardware. While it is a cross-gen game, there's absolutely no excuse to have it run the way it does. The game does offer something called action mode which stabilizes frame rate, but it does not even lock 60 and also lowers the resolution. The movie mode is higher resolution, but capped at a 30 frame rate. The fact that this even exists on a title that looks like it's out of a PS2, PS3 era is abysmal on a new generation console. The audio is your usual standard Dynasty Warrior stuff that you're used to in previous titles. The soundtrack mostly consists of your traditional Chinese musical instruments mixed in with hard rock and heavy metal. So if you're into that, then you'll be fine. It works for the franchise and has always been the staple. The game also lets you change music to your liking whether you're in the main menu or in the game, which is a nice touch. Across the board, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is not really a bad game. It hits the certain niche and mixes in your typical Musou genre gameplay with strategic political choices. It's not really a game for everyone and it's quite repetitive, but then again, the franchise is known for its repetition and has been around forever. It's completely up to the player if they enjoy this type of rinse and repeat gameplay or not. The biggest flaw of this title are the visuals with how old Dynasty War franchise is at this point and how far the technology has progressed it still looks like a game from the ancient days of PS2, PS3 era, which is quite unfortunate. It's understandable that putting a bunch of enemies on screen can cause big technical problems. If we look at a game like Total War, Warhammer 3, or any of those other previous entries, those games don't really seem to have the same issues and look far better than what Dynasty Warriors has to offer. Omega Force, please drop this engine and create something brand new. Your future Dynasty Warriors could benefit so much more from some fresh tech from the ground up. Gaming Instincts will be giving Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires a score of 7 out of 10. And this concludes Gaming Instincts review of Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. To see more videos, reviews, and content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, this has been Sam Lee, and until next time.